I gotta be careful what I say, dang it. Okay, so I'll start off with just something weird and awkward. Um, last spring, I, I had the opportunity to meet this young man who had just kind of this crazy hair and he had a fun personality. His name is John Keller. And we've chatted a few times and I get this text from John and it says, I need a picture of you. That's a weird thing, like a bathroom mirror selfie. Like what are we going for, bro? And uh, I, I said, sure. And I sent him a few pictures and stuff like that. And I said, let's meet and chat. Like, I want to hear what you got going. And he started talking about, he asked me his question. He says, do you know the mission of Keller Williams? I went, um, and I started listing off businesses worth having, you know, or careers worth having, businesses worth owning. And I started listing off these things like, but that's not why we do this. But that's not why we do this. And I says, okay, so what is it? And he says, that's what we're working on. And I said, okay, tell me more about that. And he says, well, Gary thought for a while it's where real estate professionals thrive. And he says, you're kind of my example here of it's where entrepreneurs thrive because I built this company called Cyberbacker that I just wanted to do some cool stuff because as a maps coach and an agent, I was buried. I don't know if you guys have ever felt that. Anyone ever feel buried in this industry? No, just me. Okay, we'll give you some examples. Um, hopefully it helps. But I started hiring out of the Philippines in 2012, and it was an accident. I put an ad online because at Megacamp, Gary had this guy up there who said, oh, I'm posting ads on Craigslist to advertise property, and I'm getting buyer leads. And I thought, well, I can do that. And then I thought, I want to have an assistant help me with that. So someone applies and says, I'm in the Philippines. I can help you with that. And I went, well, how's that going to work? And it did work. We got a ton of leads. And... I went ahead and went to the next thing I just don't like doing, which does anyone answer that question for your seller every week? What are you doing to sell my house? We don't say that. We give them a seller report. Anyone do that? Yeah, I hated those because usually it meant price reduction conversation. I didn't love those. But when I had the stats, when I had the data, when it was organized, it was easy, easy, easy. And so I got thinking, maybe I can hire someone else from the Philippines to help me with that. So when you were in... 2017, going back, our real estate team up in Ogden, we were number one in Weber and Davis, according to Real Trends, and units closed with 203 transactions with a 100% virtual team. So it was fun. And then I had a MAPS coach reach out and say, you're coaching 67 people. You have a team that sells over 200 homes per year, and you have nights and weekends off. What are you doing that I'm not? And so I started helping a friend. And uh, next thing you know, all these maps coaches start having cyber backers and it just kind of went crazy and out of control because some of us are a little bit entrepreneurial and we use it a lot of different ways. And now we've created 3,400 jobs. Last year, we profit shared $647,000. We do on average 300 classes per month and we do it primarily in the Philippines. And the reason we do it in the Philippines is because we've got two legal entities there because people wonder like, what happens if they steal my Facebook password or anything? If you're not from the Philippines or some of these countries, you can't take legal action. When the threat's just as much as in the US, you can enforce your contracts. So anyway, but I wanna walk you through some of my process on how I got to where I am and what I'm doing and all this madness. Did that slide come through? Cool, let's look at this real quick. This. I totally stole out of um, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Anyone read that? That's like a favorite. I think it's page 144. And it's this right here. Whenever a task comes along, the first question is, will I enjoy doing this? Because if you enjoy doing it, you're more than likely going to do it. And then it goes to this next thing. No, I won't. So anyone have that? No, I don't. But I kind of have to. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. Um, anyone enjoy listing appointments? Like you actually love going on a listing appointment. There's only one in a room full of realtors. Okay, two of it, three of us. Okay. Is anyone like me where your seller gives you a lot of information and it's a lot to remember? Not only that, you hate filling out listing forms. It's okay to say I hate filling out listing forms, but it has to get done, right? Yes? Okay, so here was mine. One of my tasks, will I enjoy doing this? So will I enjoy going on a listing? Yes, I will. Um, schedule, go on the appointment. But let's look at what you do when you get there. I have to take notes. I have to fill out paperwork. And in today's world, that can be all done electronically, correct? So uh, this is one of my geek tricks. I love this. Um, I'm familiar with the Echo Frames Amazon has. These are cool. They're so nerdy. I got a couple of pair. But if I'm on a listing appointment, I can go ahead and throw these guys on. And my wonderful cyber backer, her name's Jenny. 
she's right here and I can go ahead and say three bedrooms, two bathrooms, quarter acre lot, and she can be filling out MLS paperwork. Now, make sure you preview your paperwork <laughs> constantly on everything. Make sure you're doing a good job. Little important things that they might tell you though, she can capture it right there and it's real time. And she, Jenny is more than anything, my promise keeper. If I say I'm gonna do something, she makes sure I do it 100% of the time because in this industry, our word's important and so is our integrity. So it became, is this task income generating? You're not gonna make money off taking great notes and putting them in your CRM. But is it an obligation? Well, for me, I feel like it is. I feel like it's important to go ahead and keep your word. I feel like it's important to remember birthdays. It's important to make them feel special. And so can it be outsourced? Yes, I request assistance and she'll help me with that. So that was one of the little things that we did. I mean, a lot of this industry, when you look at what you actually have to do yourself, a lot of it, yeah, you are going to have to show up on the listing appointment. You're going to have to show the home. You have to do everything that requires a physical presence or a real estate license, correct? But if it doesn't require those two things, it can be done by somebody else. And so we've been playing with this and just kind of pushing the envelope to see how far we can take it. If you take nothing else, take this. But I'll start at the top and I'll look at my calendar and I'll say present with a task. Is this the highest and best use of my time? And if for any reason, I can't say this is a valuable piece of time invested, I need to hire someone else. And a lot of times it's, am I the best person to do it? Because truthfully, I'm not the best to do a lot of things. Ask my ex-wife, she'll tell you. <laughs> so, but it has to get done. And so this was the thing that started changing just everything with me for leverage. So, um, Anyone here actually do lead generation? Like we're all say we're supposed to, Bold's coming up. I won't tell Carl, he's coming, he's awesome. But does anyone actually get on the phone and do lead generation? Like consistently? Okay, a couple of us. So how good are you at putting notes in your CRM while you're calling and building the list? And if they don't answer, sending a text. Like anyone like rock star status with it? Like put me on stage with Gary Keller in, at Family Reunion, I'm ready. Okay, so I was horrible, like one of the worst. Because my schedule would be, I'd get into the office, start building the list of who I was going to call that day, but then it's time for lunch. And after lunch, I just didn't feel like it. So I might call a couple people, leave some messages, and I just wasn't efficient. What I found is I can have someone else build my call list. And when I call, they're with me, but they're putting notes into the CRM because it has to get done. It's an obligation and it's income generating. If they don't answer, someone else can handle my phone and send a text. In fact, if you guys want to text me right now, someone will text you back, but you see me here talking. If you call me right now, my phone will get answered. If you Facebook message me, yeah, I might have shared my password, Dean. I'm sorry. <laughs> we learned there's this thing, these little, some things. There's these little, there's people out there pretending to be others online. I thought, well, why can't I just weaponize that and make it? pretend to be me online and someone else can do a better job of being me in the digital space than I can. So we outsourced that too. But going back to just the actual phone call, when people would say it's my son's birthday next week, for me, I would hear it, but I wouldn't type it down and getting them something for their birthday. Why would I do that? I mean, that was like something a nice person would do who's thoughtful and I desire to be, but that doesn't mean I am, you know, I can desire to be six foot tall. I'm not growing, but, uh, Someone was listening in my ear, updating my CRM and making sure that, hey, Craig, it's someone's birthday. Like, let's do something nice for them. And I started going, holy cow. And progressively, my world started to get better and it started to change because I had a great assistant. And leverage right now, anyone hiring and you're having a hard time hiring and you've been having a hard time since this great resignation came along? Yeah? Okay. So I'm constantly hiring because people ask us to find a cyber backer for them. We get about 20,000 applicants per week. We'll do on average 4,500 interviews per week and we'll hire less than 100 because we're literally hiring people that you can bet your business on. And anytime you're making a hire, that's what you're doing. Uh, if you've been to career visioning, I've heard like you hire one out of 100 and one out of 200, these ridiculous numbers. And when you look at the amount of time it takes to find someone you can bet your business on, it's just astronomical. So at some point you need to go ahead and just master this leverage, but knowing what to leverage. So the first thing to leverage is the stuff that you absolutely know it's income generating that you can't outsource. That's the big thing right there. 
everything in your 20% that has to get done in your world. And believe it or not, there's people that they just love being able to do your 20%. When I told someone, listen, your job's going to be listening to me talking on the phone. You're going to take notes. If I tell someone that I'm going to do something, you're going to put it on a to-do list and you're going to make sure I do it. And you're going to manage my, ske my schedule. And for me, it's Jenny. She loves that job. It's like her favorite and it's taking care of her. So it was something fun we just kind of built. So everyone's heard leads, listings, leverage, correct? Okay, so when you're hiring people, you have this other model that this is only if you wanna hire good people and have a good model for this. You've got recruiting here at the bottom and you really can't write with this black one. You guys can't see that, right? Okay, so let's take recruiting. And it all starts right here. And then you've got, don't tell my math teacher, I have a hard time drawing a triangle or Gary, but it's that. You've got training. Has anyone been to any KW training ever? Yeah. I mean, come on, we're doing this today. This is like part of our culture. And then we've got this other piece right here, which is retention. And if you're going to be able to execute this model, you have to execute this model. And you have to have a model for recruiting. You have to get a lot of people to find someone that's going to be the best for the job. You have to train them and it's got to be constantly ongoing. But then you have to have a retention piece to make sure that they never leave. And if you really want to nail that retention piece, ooh, the sound change, that's kind of fun. Sounds like I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Sweet. All right. That retention piece right there. For a while, I was hiring great people, but I was losing them. That ever happened to anyone? Like, especially if it's an agent and you've got a team, like that really hurts when that happens. And so I started playing with this a little bit. And I realized that if you do not have a plan where people can go ahead and live their best life and hit their goals, they're going to leave your world. This is why I don't have a real estate team anymore. Two reasons. Number one, I just stopped having fun with it. And I learned during COVID, I couldn't do both. So... Um, but that retention piece became it. You have to figure out the goals of other people and as far as they want to go in this world and have, being able to retain them is based on your ability to do that. So we built out a profit share component because I asked people, what do you want? They said, we want stock in the company. And I went, I'm not going to make a publicly traded company. I'm not saying I won't. Gary asked me the question. He says, what are you doing with this? You want to go publicly traded? You're going to sell? What are you going to do with Cyberbacker? I says, I don't know. I'll keep an open mind. But people said they wanted stock. And I says, well, why do you want stock? And they says, because we want to be able to get residual investment income. So I looked up and said, okay, what's my biggest problem right now? I have to find more applicants. Well, who else has done that? Gary. And so I built a profit share model exactly like his. The profit shared 647,000 last year. And they have a five-year vesting period. So people can get residual income just like Keller Williams. I started to look at what are the other things that they want. They wanted houses and they wanted cars. They wanted to be able to live a great life with those things. And so I went, okay, well, how do you structure that? How do you build that? Well, what I learned is we can loan them money. We can profit share the interest and we can help them buy cars and we can help them go ahead and buy houses. And that builds this retention piece out. And when you're going to hire great people, that's the model. And you've got to just dominate it, all three of those. So, because when you have this and you have this, everything works. And, and this is as, as, in, or as basic as I have this weird belief that if someone's going to pay me to go ahead and put a sign with my phone number of it in front of it, in front of their house, when someone calls that phone better get answered. But you guys are right here and sometimes you're with clients and it's impolite to say, hold on, this might be someone calling on a listing. So I went ahead and just went to my phone and said, how do we get that answered 24-7? And what's the process? Because for me, if I was answering a call while I was driving and someone's like, yeah, I really want to see this house and I want to go ahead and sell my home. I'm like, great, I'll call you later. Usually I would remember to call them at about 1030 when I'm laying in bed. Anyone else have that? And you're going, oh no, I'll, I, I told them I'd call them back. I guess I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and you forget again, or you kind of feel like an idiot because you didn't do what you said you were going to do. And I learned when someone else answered my phone, it was delegated, it got in my schedule, someone was reminding me, it worked out great, you know? 
the whole concept right here was kind of based on me watching my son interact with his babysitter. And I realized that she was going to go ahead and tell him now it's time to wake up for your nap and now it's time to eat and now it's time to play. And now it's time to go ahead and, you know, work on whatever you're going to work on. And, and that was good babysitting, but why wasn't that good adulting? You know, like, why wouldn't I have the same thing? So we just kept playing with this leverage concept and designed this. And now there's 3,400 people to work here. And that's kind of what we did. So anyway, I want to run through a lot. I've got a lot more and I can go on with this forever. Um, right now, does everyone have a good assistant? Yeah. Are they maxed yet? No. Okay. So they probably got some more in them. And that's your next piece is it's going ahead and maxing out your assistant because as your business grows, so does their responsibilities. And then being able to decide what do they get to leverage next? You know, originally I had my assistant and then I went ahead and said, Hey, can you also manage my social media? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Can you also go ahead and take every one of my Facebook friends and put them in a database? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Can you respond to all the messages coming in? And what happens is my to-do list for her kept growing and growing and growing. And so we had to scale and get more people and consistently that's it. And when you look at the growth, we went ahead and I started Cyberbacker. My only intention was to help some maps coaches. That's it. And we had close to 300 coaches at that time. Um, so our first year we went ahead and we created hundred jobs because we based our success on how many jobs we created year two, 232 jobs, year three, 870. Last year, we ended with 2,199 jobs. And then we went ahead and Gary talked about this fifth model, fifth model. If the, he said, if they were going to be a fifth model, it would be expansion. And I went, okay, so how do you go ahead and expand a business like this? Well, there's two kinds of expansion. And some of you guys, you have this in your real estate business because you're part of one or because you know about one, but you have geographic expansion, which you guys see companies like, dude, you've got a Livian shirt on. Like, there you go. There's one right there. That's a geographic expansion. But then you also have a demographic expansion. Some of you guys, you have property management or you have new construction or you have different things like that. And so I started playing with, well, how do you go ahead and expand this? So we franchised Cyberbacker. It's got 53 franchises. And we looked at all the different things that real estate supports and started creating sub-franchises. Because when someone buys a house, sometimes they're going to want solar or they're going to want pest care or they're going to want TV or they're going to want internet. And we just started putting it down and keep going, going back to our mission at Cyberbacker, which is really to create jobs. You look at the average person in the Philippines and the gross national income per capita, which is the money earned in a country divided by the population, the average person over there makes $3,840 a year. Like that is not a lot of money. And here's the sad thing because it's cool, you got to go. In some places, there's these farms and agricultural areas where people don't learn to read and write. They don't get that opportunity. They learn to go ahead and work in the rice fields. And they make less than a dollar a day. And like, this is real world happening in our stuff. There's no education for them. They don't get to learn. They don't get the opportunity to better themselves. That kind of sucks, you know? So I kind of want to do something about that. And that's why I created this. So, but anyway, um, that's kind of leverage. That's kind of what I built and why I built it. Anyone want to know anything else? Like, I'll tell you anything good, except the stuff my ex-wife would tell you, you know, if you want the bad, talk to her. So anyone have any wins with their cyber backer? Yeah. Actually, shoot. So when you, when you look at my own, okay. uh, anyways, when you look at a VA and the different tasks that they can do, Yeah. Yeah. So your first profitability is you and making you as effective as you can be. And you look at it kind of like a hospital where you're the brain surgeon. And if the brain surgeon has to stop and also be the janitor, this person who can be making seven figures is doing the $40,000 a year job. The first thing you have to do is leverage you. 
and you've got to find someone that thinks at your speed. And, and that's not an overnight thing. Um, my cyberbacker, Jen's my third, third really good assistant. And the other, like I've had one that's still with me and one just, we went the other way, but she is, she's a lot smarter than I am, a lot smarter. And she's good at when I give her something, she makes sure it gets done. I mean, the joke is she works me like a $2 mule, like cause she's in control of the schedule and everything. But her job is making sure that I'm only performing where I'm efficient and that's it. Everything else is done. So that's your first piece in leverage. Once you're leveraged, the second piece is it's back to getting more business. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you don't have a great strategy for taking that page 137 bullseye of your general population to your haven't mets, to your mets, all the way through that, that's where I tell everyone to begin, database management. Because there's a lot of people, this might not get to you, but this gets to a lot of the people I coach, that when you go ahead and you do that thing we all do, where you wake up, you get your phone, you turn off the alarm, you go into the bathroom and you jump on Facebook because that's just kind of what we've learned people do. You sign in and you see someone else listed their home with someone else. Does anyone have that physical reaction? And it just ruins your day. And then when you go back, silly me, they weren't in a database. I wasn't working it. I wasn't in touch. I didn't over communicate what I, what I do. I didn't have a MOFR. There is no value proposition. Can't blame them for working with someone else. But your first place is to make sure that you stop losing business that you should be getting with your database. So my first person, they manage me. My second person or that person, that's what they do. So um, I would start there. In fact, if you guys want to try something cool, um, I'm going to call on you just one second. I remember you from Bold. Yeah, we did that. Um, we did this thing called what Cyberback originally was supposed to be was having a one-to-one. -one. What our consumers told us they wanted was basically a virtual assistant. We said, okay, well, let's just build the best, let's find the best people. Let's just build the best, you know, virtual assistant program out there. And then we went back and said, okay, what Cyberbacker was designed to be was what we now call Cyberbacker Prime. And if you want to test drive that, give me a call. Um, I can give you my number. There's a simulation we do that's how I work, like having someone dial and you go through a full process so you can get working your database effectively. But that's it. It's going ahead and making sure that you're more than supported because you are the best return on investment. Your time is right now. So anyway. So for us, it's a little bit different. We pattern ourselves. Yikes. Thinking that we needed a social media everything and categorizing them per year on my Facebook. And I'm going to print 2000 pictures and give them to my daughter for her birthday. Like That's she just awesome. takes care of me. And we, we video call a ton just when I'm in the car and we just, I, I appreciate her so much. That's awesome. Don't drive in video call too much. Be some so safe. <laughs> there. there you go. There you go. She's well, good. and that's how I work. My assistant is on, uh, on, we're on zoom on a Facebook portal because the camera follows you. And I'd noticed that I was leaving the room and she was talking to me and didn't know I wasn't there. So now it follows me, but she's just in my desk, like a regular assistant. So, and if you were at mega camp or Inman, you saw like, we've got cool robots. Now we wanted to go ahead and give them a physical presence because I own this venue, copper nickel in downtown Ogden. And I wanted a receptionist, but finding a receptionist, number one for a venue, doesn't really make sense, but people kind of want to know the history because it's a historic building. So we put a robot in there. It's driven by a cyber backer and they can walk people around this thing. It's crazy. 
Yeah, seriously, we're going to go ahead. We did it at Mega Camp. We did it in, and we're going to do it again at Family Reunion. But we just wanted to solve, okay, if we need a physical presence, how do we do that? So that's awesome. And that's exactly how to do it because that's wherever they are, that's leverage. So cool. Any other comments or anything? If you guys want to stay in touch, I'm uh, just down in Ogden. Like you can come hang out. We're neighbors. Like I'm not that, like I don't have it all figured out, but I learn from all the wonderful people I coach and all that every day. But here's my number, 801 686 8043. If you guys need anything, just send me an email. Give me a call. Like I'm from Ogden. I'm a KW agent. I've been here a while. So sound good? All right. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks so much, Craig. Um, great. Well, we have uh, First Colony with lunch today. We've got a barbecue. So feel free to stick around. We also have a cool class um, and then we'll be back next week. Have a great one.